Hey there, you dark little creatures. This is Existential, Greg filled with existential gratitude. Thank you for all the support you have been showing. The channel is slowly but surely growing, and I appreciate every single like and subscription we get from you guys and gals. Today, we are going to be taking a look at infinity as we explore demonic possession, witchcraft, rites, and rituals, and all kinds of other tricky and twisted themes. Get ready for the Infinity Game by Paige Turner. What a writer's name. Has anyone ever played the Infinity Game? The one with the mirrors? Most people don't know it's a game. They just think it's a cool visual effect. Maybe it's different for me, being raised by witches. Not Halloween witches, but the ones who practice Wicca. You can Google it if you really want to learn about them, but I'm here to talk about the game. Most people don't understand what it's capable of. They have no idea they're standing at a locked door or what's on the other side. It's almost like Wizard of Oz. If you can find your way to the Mirror Master, you'll be rewarded with a wish. But getting there is not an easy journey, and you want to choose your words carefully. To play, you need at least one other person. Two standing mirrors, five black candles, a stick of chalk, warm clothing, and a red armband. The red band is the most important thing to remember. It's not required to get in, but you shouldn't leave without it. While in the mirror world, you must be wary of your reflection. Its only goal is to take your place in the real world, meaning you will be trapped forever. It cannot kill you. Instead, it will attempt to trick you. Never, ever speak to it. It will be dressed like you, except its armband will be on the left. Whoever you have waiting in the real world will be responsible for ensuring it doesn't get out. Choose someone you trust. Only your reflection can take your place. But everything else you meet will try to kill you from sheer spite. If you die in there, your soul will be trapped, and the mirror through which you entered will shatter. Make sure your friend is aware a shattered mirror indicates they should immediately destroy the other one as well. Though unlikely, there are a few entities powerful enough to use this situation to their advantage. To be safe, make sure the friend isn't easily manipulated. Now that you have all the supplies, draw a pentagram on the floor with space for the mirrors in the center. Then put the lit candles on each point of the star. When everything is in place, the reflection will appear as a never-ending hallway. Stand between the mirrors and focus only on the infinite corridor. Soon you will notice a shadow far behind reflection. Focus on that, letting the world around you fade. Do not look away or blink. Slowly begin to inch forward, but do not be afraid of bumping into the glass. Think of it as platform nine and three quarters. You must know it's going to work. When you feel a drastic temperature drop, you can look at your surroundings. You are officially inside the Mirror World's lobby, though I suppose it's more like a bridge. It's what connects the two places, but my family calls it the lobby. This is where you must proceed with extreme caution. The Mirror World is a backwards replica of ours. Not only does that mean left is right, it also means beautiful, thriving cities are dead and crumbling. If you are unable to enter, do not leave the game unattended. Remove the mirrors immediately. The things that live there can't be described as alive, but they are desperate. I hope to never open this diary again. I purchased a new book for the start of our new lives, but instead of writing on crisp, clean pages, I continue here. The tear-stained memorial to the darkest six months of my life was to be buried under decades of beautiful memories. Yet here I am. I won the stupid game. We should be far away from this place, beginning anew, not here. There is only hate and pain left in my heart. Everyone told me not to go, but I didn't have a choice. Each time someone said, you can always have more children, my heart ached with fury. I was prepared to risk my own life, but not for this. Not to feel the joy of knowing my son would survive only to have it ripped away again. I thought I would be different, but now I write this only to warn others. I hope that vile creature never wins another soul. I entered easily, feeling the temperature drop as if exiting a heated room into an arctic tundra. I always imagined a chill in the air, but this was cold enough to see my breath. Behind me was a mirror, and in it I saw Thomas. He appeared to be in shock. His mouth hung open as he waved. It would have been funny under different circumstances. I think the strange hallway is an in-between place. Both sides are lined with identical white doors, and I didn't know which to choose. I couldn't see the end of the hall. It still appeared infinite. I tried the closest doors, but they were locked. There were no keyholes, just solid knobs. I walked down the corridor, feeling more nervous each time I looked back to see Thomas farther away. 
There was no way to track the passage of time. Electronics won't work there. I don't know how long I walked before I heard the soft click of a door opening, but I no longer saw home when I turned around. Instead, I saw my reflection. She was wearing her armband on the left, just as the legend said. I know I should have been afraid, but I found it comforting. It meant the stories were true, that John had a real chance at surviving. I would have gladly traded my own life for his, but that's not how the game worked. My reflection called to me, Are you lost? You need to go this way. She indicated the open door where she emerged. I knew not to respond. I remained silent as she tried again. Hello, what's wrong? Are you deaf or just rude? Fine. I don't care if you want to spend eternity trying to open locked doors. She shrugged and began walking in Thomas's direction. I could not follow. I had to trust my husband to tell the difference. She would return when she failed to deceive him. I couldn't go the way she recommended but wanted to look inside. I walked back to the open door, keeping a healthy distance. Standing in the center of the hall, I tried to peer inside, but it was too dark to see anything. I wasn't even outside yet, and I was already cracking under the pressure. Were the other doors all really locked? How long before something worse found me? It was then I realized, why do they call this a game? Game implies there's a way to move forward, clues to follow. That's when I understood how literal the stories were. If everything is the backwards, shouldn't I go to the door opposite the one indicated by my reflection? I reached for the other doorknob, holding my breath as I felt it turn beneath my hand. It opened effortlessly, though I know it was locked before. It opened to reveal our kitchen, where Thomas and I chose to set the mirrors. The light was dim. Everything was reversed. But it was also filthy. Worse. Instead of finding my husband, I found a horrifying, twisted old man. His back was hunched, his teeth and nails were yellow, and his red face contorted in hatred. I was frozen with fear as his icy gaze bore into my soul. What the hell do you think you're doing here? He screamed, spit flying from his mouth. Don't you dare ignore me, tramp. The old man croaked in a raspy, hoarse voice. He reached under the table, retrieving a long metal cane. Thankfully, he was slow as he looked. I ran around him, threw the swinging door to the den. He was still cursing me as I continued out the front door. At the end of the driveway, I noticed my surroundings. The neighborhood was in ruins. The yards were dead, and the houses were all abandoned. It was my neighborhood, but it looked like a ghost town. None of the cars worked. Each one had busted windows, popped hoods, or slashed tires. It was midnight back home. It should have been noon there, but it looked like dusk. I understand why our reflections are so desperate to trade places. For some reason, I felt confident the old man wouldn't follow me outside. Something gave me the idea his part of the game was to guard that kitchen door for when I needed to get home. I didn't stay to test the theory, but now I'm pretty sure I was correct. I was never told where to go once I made it this far. The stories were all vague in that regard. The only thing I knew for certain was that it would get worse before it was over. That's when I realized how desperately I needed a working vehicle for speed and protection. I resigned myself to look for a bicycle when I remembered the mechanic who lives three houses down. Every weekend his garage door is open and he can be seen working on an old car. It was hardly more than a body and wheels. Last time I saw it. If everything is opposite, wouldn't that car be in working condition here? Yes, it was. The damn thing made me truly believe I could do it. Hope is dangerous. If something is too good to be true, it probably is. I was so excited by the sight of the pristine red car, I forgot to be wary of danger. A strange creature I almost mistook for a dog stood between me and victory. It was of similar size and color to a German Shepherd, but its mouth opened sideways to reveal extra rows of teeth. I don't know if its eyes were located elsewhere, or it just didn't have any. But the ears looked hard, almost like rounded horns. I couldn't discern a nose either, but I'm sure it had one. I could hear it sniffing my scent. It gave me a headache to look too closely, like my brain was rejecting the very sight of it. My eyes frantically searched for anything to use as a weapon, but there was nothing nearby. My heart sank as I realized it would come down to a race I held no chance of winning. Stealing a quick glance at my surroundings, I saw the only chance was to run for the door and hope it's unlocked. Otherwise, I would be eaten by a dog monster. I tried to mentally prepare myself when a long, high-pitched whistle turned the creature's growls to whimpers. It wasn't pleasant to my ears either, but I enjoyed seeing its effect. The noise continued until the dog thing ran out of sight. I didn't see the source of the sound at first, but I didn't have to wait long. My reflection walked into view, smiling proudly. She stopped several feet away but remained silent. I was confused until I almost asked why. My mouth opened wide, 
froze, then slowly closed. She hoped I would talk without thinking. Plus, if I die this quick, she can't escape. In her own way, she's more terrifying than the monsters. Hmm. Oh, almost had you that time. <laughs> you might want to find yourself a weapon before you run into anything else. Hey, do you even know which way to go? She spoke like we were best friends. I was too afraid to shake my head or shrug. It seemed like the kind of place that thrived on loopholes. Instead, I stared at her feet, willing her to say a direction so I could go the opposite way. You look lost. Do you need a map? I could draw one for you. Come on, just nod or something. I'm trying to help. She stomped her foot in frustration. Be that way. I don't care if you want to live or not, but it's a shame the kid has to die just because you won't ask for help. She shrugged and began walking away. Those words hit me like a freight train at the time, but now that the words carry the added weight of truth, I feel as if they will crush me. Controlling my temper as she left was one of the most difficult parts of that nightmare. So many times, I wondered if punching her counted as communication. But John's life was not worth the risk. That is when I vowed to break every mirror I saw for the rest of my life. A vow I have thus far made good on. When she was well out of sight, I discovered my next obstacle would be to find keys. The car was locked, but the house was not. Knowing something would be inside, I took a large crowbar from the garage. I crept in the back door, staying low. I was in an empty kitchen hoping for a nice key. Hooked by the door, but couldn't be so fortunate. The room smelled of the rotten food on every counter, and flies were swarming something that looked like raw meat. I choked down the vomit, threatening to erupt, and focused on John. This experience was nothing compared to the idea of losing him. I made my way into a den with a broken TV and rough-looking leather furniture. From where I stood, a recliner was directly in front of me with a couch on either side, all angled toward the television in the center. Small, dirty tables sat on each end of the couches, and my heart skipped a beat when I saw car keys atop one by the recliner. Forgetting my fear, I reached down quickly, only to scream myself hoarse when a cold, skeletal hand shot out from the chair, grasping my wrist. It had a grip of steel. For a moment, I thought it would break my arm. I lashed out desperately with the crowbar, making contact with whatever was on the other side of that recliner. The instant its grip released, my hand closed around the keys and I ran for the car. It was pure luck the dog. Monster hadn't returned, because I didn't stop to check before flying outside. As soon as the car door closed, I hit the lock button three times and performed a thorough inspection of the back seat. Satisfied there were no unexpected passengers, I was ready to go. There was a horrific moment of fear that the car still wouldn't start as I inserted the key, but it roared to life like it was brand new. Hell, it probably was. It really is just like King's Quest. Find a clue, find an item, solve a puzzle, escape danger, advance, repeat to the boss fight. Careful, L.A., your nerd is showing. Look at me, I made a joke. Never thought that would happen again. I went to the end of the driveway and hit the brakes, realizing I didn't know which way to go. In a game, when there's multiple paths, they usually all come out to the same place. Or one is a deadly trap with no escape. Of course, you usually know your destination. That's when it hit me. If I'm playing a game where the goal is to cure a sick boy, where would the boss fight take place? A hospital. You would want the best doctor with the best equipment. I turned left toward the best hospital in the state. When John was born, we moved three hours away from our hometown to be near it. Fifteen minutes away was the closest residence we could find, and it seemed good at the time, but now it felt like hours. I didn't know what the roads would be like, but I knew it wouldn't be good. I could have never imagined the level of destruction as I saw that day. Our normally smooth paved streets were filled with large potholes, some big enough to get stuck in if I wasn't careful. The buildings were in various stages of demolition. None looked to be inhabited, but I'm sure they were. The beautiful plants and trees that once lined the medians were brown and dead. I kept careful watch on my surroundings, worried something would come charging from a dark alley as I slowly steered around potholes. Luckily, it only happened once, close to the halfway point. I was preparing for another tight squeeze when I heard a scraping sound from behind. In the rearview mirror, I saw another deformed-looking man. This one was younger with long, greasy hair and burned skin. The sound was from the steel bat he was dragging, and one of those weird dog monsters tagged along like his pet. If the roads were decent, I could outrun them easily, but I knew they would catch me if I drove into the middle of that bad patch. I slowed down even more, letting them get a little closer to the decent section of the road. I don't think they are capable of intelligent thought. They did not hesitate when I began reversing, nor did they make any attempt to move when I ran them down. I aimed for the man, considering him the main threat, but the beast was only stunned. 
There was a moment I thought it was over when the car stalled on top of the corpse, but the wheels found traction when the beast collided with the rear end. I'm not sure how he avoided going under the wheels as I flew backwards, but it wasn't touched. I shifted into drive and punched the gas, trying once more for the dog. Monster but still missing. Going fast as I dared, I ran over the man once more. Just to be sure, before coming to a cautious stop, I hated not knowing what the dog thing was doing but felt fairly certain it ran away to lick its wounded pride. I didn't doubt I would see it again, but that was a problem for later. I made it to the hospital without further attacks, parking in front of the main entrance. The sight of it did not inspire confidence. It was in worse condition than anything I had seen yet. That's when I realized I made a terrible mistake. Everything is opposite. The best hospital would be the worst. I needed our world's worst hospital. I jumped back into the car, making my way to the free clinic on 3rd. If my theory was right, it would probably hold the cure for cancer. A flock of zombie birds attacked the car at one point, but they didn't cause much damage. I knew I'd made the right decision the moment I entered the bad side of town. Well, our world's bad side. In this world, it was full of lavish manners. The clinic was immaculate and double its normal size. I parked on the curb and ran for the entrance. It was starting to get darker, but I didn't understand how. There should have been hours of daylight left. Then, once again, as if reading my mind, the bitch was back. Gosh, are you just now getting here? You better hurry. Time is running out fast, she teased. I had never heard of a time limit. I ached to taunt her with the obvious failures to deceive Thomas. If she was still there, it meant she couldn't fool him. The thought filled me with strength. I turned my back on her and walked inside, but she followed. You know that right, that when it gets dark, the hourglass stands empty. Well, not literally, but I like the expression. Anyway, I just wanted to check, because it seems like most people from your world are ignorant to that detail, she said nonchalantly. The more I considered it, the more it made sense. Most games do have time limits, and being in this place after dark does have a sort of game over vibe. Unfortunately, I couldn't ask questions and I had to keep moving. I thought she would leave again, but she continued to follow at a careful distance. I didn't give her the satisfaction of looking back. Seeing a map of the hospital, I stopped to study the layout. Of course I needed to the top floor. It couldn't be right here on the ground floor. No, heaven forbid. I walked to the elevator, but noticed my reflection was gone. The doors chimed and slid open. I put one foot inside, but pulled it out quickly. Did I really want to walk into a metal box in a bizarro world where there's no one to help if I get trapped inside? I looked around and saw a nice, open stairway. The empty elevator closed behind me as I made my way to the stairs. I held on to the rail all the way up. Losing because of a fall so late in the game would be too insulting to live with. I'm glad I did too because my reflection jumped out screaming boo the moment I reached the top. I wonder if anyone has tried to murder their reflection. I'll have to look into that one day. I held my crowbar at the ready as I passed her. It felt glued to my hand after so much time. My reflection was tailing me a little closer, getting desperate, I'm sure. When I reached the reception desk for the children's ward, she took a seat in the waiting area. She grinned when she saw me watching, giving me two thumbs up and a wink. You go, girl! I'm rooting for you! More confused than ever, I went through the double doors in search of the doctor. Or Mirror Master, I guess. Terrible name. They had no imagination back in the day. I would have named him the Greedy Gremlin. Okay, maybe that's not much better, but it is better. He wasn't hard to find. I stood in a dark hallway and bright lights shone under the swinging doors ahead. I'd come too far to stop then. I could feel my heart thumping in my ears with every step. When I walked into the light, it was so bright I had to shield my eyes. Then, with the snap of someone's fingers, they faded to normal indoor lighting. The only person in the room was the doctor I see on TV. The one on the ridiculous commercial with that annoyingly catchy tune. I can't remember his name. You know, the really fat, bald guy with glasses? It's not important. It wasn't how he... she... It looked anyway. It threw me off, though, and the surprise must have shown on my face. Uh, not what you were expecting. Me either. Who is this, anyway? The doctor asked, examining his own appearance. You. You don't know who you are, I stammered. Of, of course I know who I am, girl. I appear however one's mind is comfortable seeing me. But it's usually not. This. He cringed. What? Wait. How could? I tried to ask. No, you aren't here for magic lessons. And I don't give them anyway. You came here because you want something desperately enough to risk your life for it. I find that utterly delicious. So tell me, what do you want? You mean, I just tell you. And you do it. I don't have to. I don't know. Solve a riddle or kill a monster. 
I couldn't believe it could be so simple. Oh, I'm sorry. Was finding me too easy for you? Were my pets not vicious enough, my dear? Well, worry not, for next is the best part yet. The longer you are here, the darker it gets. The darker it becomes, the more of my pets you're likely to see. Most of them are nocturnal, but they'll be awake and ready for breakfast any moment now. He was a lively talker. His voice was booming with pride, and his hand gestures were all over the place. I could only stand there, horrified and speechless. Come now, what's your wish? Weren't you listening? You should probably pick up the pace. He grinned, and his teeth were no longer the normal teeth of the TV doctor, but sharp brown fangs. My son is dying. I want you to cure him. I tried to keep my voice steady. My, that's a tricky one. Money, love, fame, those things are easy. Murder is the easiest, but life, that is very tricky indeed. It disrupts the natural order. He was enjoying himself. Please, I'll do anything, I begged. Well, there is this one way it could work. If you're sure, there is no turning back. He paused, stretching the suspense until I vigorously shook my head in agreement. Very good then. With a snap of his fingers, a scroll appeared in one hand and a pen in the other. It was the kind of pen you dip into ink, but I never saw one before that moment. Sign here, please. One flick of the wrist and the long scroll opened, falling to the floor between us. I picked up the bottom end, eyes scrolling over the millions of tiny printed words jammed together on the paper. At the very end was a sign here line. If I sign this, it'll cure my baby. He will be in and stay in perfect health. I would not see my son cured of one sickness only to fall ill the following week. Absolutely. In fact, with this contract, your boy will be immune to all disease, he assured. My heart sang at the words. And if the cost of saving John happened to be my own life. As I suspected, it was a price I'd happily pay. I reached for the pen and with a stab too fast for my eyes to see, the doctor pricked my finger. A large drop of blood fell onto the paper, and with another snap, the contract vanished. It's been a pleasure doing business. By the way, to cure your son, I had to borrow half his father's remaining lifespan. Toodles. The doctor disappeared with a final wink. I hope I never see his wretched face again. His words made my blood run cold, but I couldn't stop to do math right then. Terrified of what would be chasing me, I ran back to the waiting room area. My reflection was waiting for me at the doors to the waiting room, smiling. I shoved on the doors with all my strength, but she had me locked in. I used my adrenaline to smash the glass door to the reception counter with my crowbar. My arms and legs were cut getting through, but I didn't have time to worry about blood loss. I flew over the counter, ignoring the shocked look of my reflection. As I made my way down the stairs, I saw several more zombie-looking people coming out of various rooms. I almost didn't make it back to the ground floor when a kid with no legs managed to grab my ankle. The only thing that saved me was the crowbar catching the rail I tumbled. When I finally made it to the entrance, I saw the car was turned onto its side and several more zombie and dog. Things were waiting close by, remembering the hospital map. I decided to take a chance on the ambulance bay. I was betting they would have owned at least one junked out ambulance that would run in this world. If they didn't, I would likely have died there. Not even someone with machine guns could survive on the streets now. I cried when I saw it. There was one ambulance that appeared in working condition and I was lucky enough for the keys to be inside. I still checked in the back to make sure it was empty, but that almost got me killed too. I slammed the back doors just in time to avoid one of the dogs jumping in. The ambulance rocked side to side from things trying to get in as I strapped myself into the driver's seat. It was my first time driving anything bigger than a car. I think it would have been a bumpy ride under normal conditions. There were several times I thought the ambulance would tip over. The worst was close to the end. I was almost back in my neighborhood when I heard the roar of another engine right before it crashed into my bumper. I went off the road missing a huge crater by inches before regaining control. The truck driven by my reflection reversed to follow. I did something desperate. I waited for her to get right behind me, almost touching and accelerated. As I hoped, she too sped up, trying to position herself to force me into a fishtail. At the last possible second, I closed my eyes and swerved away, once again becoming dangerously close to flipping over. Behind me, the bitch couldn't react in time. The truck she found was pointed nose down in a deep crater, its back end hanging out at a steep angle. My house was surrounded by hideous creatures. Most didn't appear human or animal. I couldn't tell what the warped things were supposed to be. Some of them had several limbs or appendages. Some had none. 
One looked like a huge floating eyeball, and another looked like a snake with two heads. I didn't see a way inside. I couldn't believe I came all this way just to lose here. At the very least, I wanted to kill as many as possible before I died. That's when a plan occurred to me. I reversed to position myself for a straight shot through our den. The house was now termite infested anyway. Even if we didn't have the huge windows, I'm sure the walls would have been weak enough to drive through. I felt like I was operating a tank as two of the creatures fell beneath the wheels. It was a strange sight as the walls crumbled around me, and the sound was terrible, but I didn't stop to enjoy the view. When the ambulance couldn't go any farther, I climbed out the passenger window and dove through the kitchen door without looking to see what followed. The moment I saw the kitchen, my eyes searched for the old man, but he saw me first. Pain blossomed behind my eyes as something struck me over the head. I fell to the ground dazed but managed to keep a grip on the crowbar. I feigned unconsciousness until the old man grabbed one of my ankles. I sat up swinging wildly and enjoyed the wet smack of contact. His black blood sprayed and I wasted no time getting to my feet. Grateful to still have the armband, I began making my way to the mirror entrance. I only made it a few steps when I heard the soft click of another door behind me. I hope you didn't expect to be rid of me that easily. Her voice no longer sounded like mine. It was deeper, distorted. I turned to see she now had the same ghoulish zombie appearance as those other things. Did she always look that way? Did I only see me because that's what I expected? Like the doctor? I hope someone solves the mysteries of that place one day. There are still so many unanswered questions. I ran for my life, focused on Thomas and John. I heard her footsteps gaining as she screamed at me. Have you figured it out yet? Wait up. I'll explain it to you. If you divide the lifespan in half, it means they have the same amount of time to live. Do you get it? Wait up. She cackled an evil, dark laugh. It sounded unnatural in her garbled voice. Humans should not be able to make the sounds her laughter made. I was so focused on the light at the end of the corridor, I didn't understand what she was telling me. I heard her footsteps closer with every step but couldn't look back. Her howling laughter followed me all the way home. When Thomas saw me, his eyes lit up with relief. Then fear and anger as he saw my appearance and that of the thing chasing me. I saw him step away from the mirror, allowing me to exit. I went through the mirror like an Olympic diver. The second I was out, I turned to see Monster. Me collide into glass, bouncing off like rubber. Now that I was back, the doorway was closed for her. Before she could rise, Thomas shattered the glass. He shattered the second one just to be safe but for the record, could have simply blown out the candles and erased the pentagram. Thomas and John passed away two weeks later. John was crying in the night. Thomas felt badly for my lack of sleep, so he took the baby for a drive. It calmed John, and it was only a few times around the block. But this time, a drunk driver ran a stop sign. See? It was all for nothing. My mother met my father four years later. It took a while for her to have a normal life again, but I always felt like we were a happy family. She was a terrific mom. I had no idea such terrible things were in her past. Dad didn't know the full story either, only that she had a husband and baby killed in a wreck before he met her. I can't blame her for not wanting to tell me. She knows how much I love a challenge. While no, I don't think I'll visit the mirror world anytime soon. It would be nice to learn more about it. Like she says, there's still so much we don't know. And personally, I have a long list of questions. Besides, it sounds fine if you don't make a wish. Right? I'll just leave this here for now, in case anyone else knows anything. Wouldn't the mirror world make out bathrooms a lot creepier? Hope you enjoyed your daily dose of heebie-jeebies. Be sure to hit that like button and subscribe too if you are a fan of creepy stories from all over the internet. Today's video is brought to you by Shopify. We love promoting software and services that can actually make a positive difference in our listeners' lives, and Shopify is one of those brands. With our affiliate link, you will get a discounted sign-up rate that will enable you to create a platform through which you can share your value with the world. Turn one day into day one and think about making the right decisions as you elude the arms of Morpheus. This fine night. Sleep tight, little creature.